was during my schooling when I was kicked out of home for leaving the cult the first time. I, I did go back to the cult again because I wanted to follow God, but I was conditioned to believe he was there. Um, but I left school uh, halfway through the secondary school. Um, Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. Tough times never last, but tough people do. I'm Michael Kazilny. We've been doing this show for about 10 years now, and I'm always very impressed with the down-to-earth and authentic people we have on the couch. We're now going out uh, all over Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania, so love and best wishes to everybody. Life's tough for everybody. We just have to make it a little bit better. On the couch tonight, a very decent fella. He rang me last week. Simon Hogendorn spent more than 35 years in a religious cult and finally got out after suffering severe bouts of depression. Simon, thank you very much for coming on the couch. Thank you. Now, it's quite amazing. I've always been interested in um, talking to a cult member, but um, not many of them speak to us, do they? No, a lot of them are fearful of uh, repercussions, not only from the people in the cult, but maybe even fears of what will happen to their families that are still in there. That's correct. And I do thank you for, you know, being so authentic. Tell, we might as well start from the start because I don't know much about you. You're a decent fella, but you grew up to parents who were in the cult. Yes, yes. Um, both of my parents were in a cult um, before I was born. And uh, after I was born uh, in the 70s, they, their cults actually split. And uh, my father stopped attending, but my mother still attended uh, one of the offshoots and um, yeah, we were brought so, up I mean, in there. So what type of cult was it? What was it, it called? Uh, each branch has a different name. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not under an umbrella name, no. but the, if you wanted to call a head office, uh, uh, the, the main branch was the Geelong Revival Centre. That's in Norlane. All right. Mm. And, and when you're in a cult, did you live in a, in a close community or you still um, went to school at a no, different we, place? No, we, we had our own homes in the community, in, in our own suburbs. Uh, we went to the normal schools um, and uh, everything was just as if we were going to a church and, and that's what we believe. We believe we were going to a church, mm -hmm. uh, the only true church, uh, all other churches being a lie of the devil. Mm -hmm. So when you say a cult, um, uh, everybody associated together. Yes, uh, yeah. everyone that was in your church mm -hmm. would associate with each other. Uh, you wouldn't associate with or, or be friends with anyone who is not in that church. Mm. Um, and being the only child of my age in the branch that I was in, I grew up without friends. Um, oh, what a shame. And, and of course, bullying is a big thing. I was, I was quite... A, um, uh, Quite alarming some of the rules it says gift of tongues no more than once every four weeks some of these rules at this cult or no loud praise while someone is speaking with tongues um, or a person disciplined but stood down for from fellowship not to be comforted concerning his fault or listened by others or this one any person stood down from fellowship temporarily or permanently not to be visited or comforted that's right, yes. Yeah, so Boys you, under 18 of age not to pair off of girls. Yeah, if, if you did anything that was against the rules of the group, you were told uh, not to attend the, the church anymore until you had straightened yourself out. And so according to these rules, no one in the church is allowed to contact you regarding that. And so you have no contact with anyone in there. Uh, and so you're totally on your own until you go back in there. Jeez. So in one way, Simon, you made a lot of good friends because how many people in the cold? Um, there's thousands of people mm -hmm. in the cult. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so you had a lot of close friends? No, no, no one my age. There was no one my age. No one your age. So, I mean, there were, the only people uh, that were around my age when I was growing up in the cult were my younger brother and my older sister. Oh. Uh, and that was the Sunday school. So, so going to school, uh, I was encouraged to tell them that uh, if they didn't go to the true church, they'd go to hell. So very, very quickly, I was ostracised at school, mm. bullied, and I was told that it was a, it was a badge of honour to be persecuted for Christ. So I had no friends growing up. Yeah, that's a real shame, folks, isn't it? Bullying is a real problem around, all around Australia and the world and um, causes a lot of depression, causes a lot of um, angst in people. But poor Simon, uh, you know, you can imagine growing up and uh, mum and dad are saying, this is the way he's trying to pass on the news about God and uh, then gets um, ridiculed and bullied and probably even beaten up. Yes, I was actually, um, 
I was beaten up on the way home from school one day and mm. knocked out. Um, For being different? Just because I, uh, well... But I, you know, Simon, it's great to be different, isn't it? It's fantastic. I'm, I'm very different, different, you know. Uh, I, I, we, we, and I collect in, um, irregular friends as well. I, th I think the originals have all the fun, don't they? Uh, you could say that. You could yeah. say that, <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's great being, being yourself, but funny thing, uh, I'm still learning who I am. Yeah. Um, the well, you're only a young fella. You're only 45. And I'm, I'm, yep. a, I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah, but the, the, you know? when, when being brought up in a cult, they give you your identity. Right. And, and you, you don't learn who you really are because you f have to fit their mould. And now that I'm out, I've been out for about um, 10 years now, and I'm still realising who I actually am. Well, whatever the cult did, you've turned to a very wholesome, confident and beautiful person, Simon. Thank Ogendorn. you. Dawn. Thank you, you have. You, you, I mean, you're not, um, you're not shy. You no, know. no. You, you express shy. yourself perfectly. Thank you. You're very authentic, you know. Now, a lot of people aren't. A lot of people wear their masks, aren't they? Mm. they, they all, all, all I hear people um, saying every day, are you busy? You know, that's almost like the, um, uh, the three words, are you successful? Are you busy? Are you busy? You know, I reckon mm. that word's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It seems like everybody is, is busy and, and suffering from some sort of a mental health condition. Mm. Was there... Um, um, and quite interesting too, when, when Simon sent me his notes, his cold said that um, all psychologists are devils. Now, something about that is... Well, they are doing the devil's work. There's no such thing as mental illness as far as the cult's concerned. Right. Um, if you have some mental illness, they would, uh, on a rare occasion, yeah. they'd say it would be demonic possession. Sure. Uh, but more, more likely than not, it's just that you're not disciplined enough. Mm -hmm. Or if your children are playing up, you need to discipline them more to keep them in line. And we might talk about that because Tom Cruise thinks very much along the same lines. Tough times never last with Simon Hogan. Dawn. Dawn. We'll be back very <laughs> shortly. And welcome back to the show. Love and best wishes to everybody watching and thank you very much for all the emails on our Tough Times Facebook site. I think there's over 25,000 people now and sharing their problems and, um, uh, and we've been passing you on to counsellors and psychologists and um, uh, love and best wishes. A lot of people out there suffer. So many people um, split up in their relationships. Spoke to a family lawyer last week, I think he said last year, in Australia alone 70,000 couples are separated. Uh, family lawyers are cleaning up. A lot of people are suffering from depression Depression. The pharmaceutical companies are cleaning up. We're spending billions of dollars on Prozac and uh, Lexapro and all those wonderful drugs out there. And I wonder sometimes what has happened to society um, that uh, people aren't getting on. Most people are splitting up. Um, a lot of marriages are unhappy. And um, people are, you know, walking around saying, are you busy when their minds are, you know, turbulent and they're on antidepressants. So what has happened to society, uh, Simon, you know? Is it maybe better to be in a cult and um, be isolated Actually, from all this uh, crazy world? Absolutely not. What you just mentioned uh, sparked a memory in my, in my head. Um, if, if you were involved in this cult and you um, are, are married and your partner decides not to be involved in the cult anymore, or if you are introduced to the cult and you want to bring your partner in but they don't want to come in, the cult will actually encourage you eventually to leave your partner, mm -hmm. causing more splits in families. Have you seen that happen? I, absolutely, yes, yes. In fact, I've been counselling a man who uh, has been struggling to get in touch with his, fa his kids again because the cult actively prevents the kids from having an association mm. with the father. They paint the father or the mother can go either way. Um, they paint them in a bad light w when they go to court because as far as the court's concerned, here's a pastor of a reputable church sticking up for the mother or the father with the child and painting the other parent in such a bad light. And more often than not, I'd find the courts listen to a pastor of a church, mm -hmm. not knowing that they're a leader of a cult. So, Simon, you're very intelligent. Uh, wh what path did you follow after school? Um, actually, I... I didn't finish my schooling. Um, it was during my schooling when I was kicked out of home for leaving the cult the mm -hmm. first time. I, I did go back to the cult again because I wanted to follow God, but I was conditioned to believe he was there. Um, but I left school uh, halfway through 
from a secondary school. Um, I never went back to school since, except uh, recently, about five years ago, I went back to, um, to uh, college to do my BA in counselling. Congratulations. Where was that? It was in Tabor, Tabor College. Um, they're in uh, Mulgrave. Congratulations. Um, thank you. I uh, had my graduation ceremony just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's terrific. Thank so, you. So you've turned, um, so <coughs> everything that's happened in the past, you've turned into a real positive and... Um, Yes. And, and you're not only going to counsel people who've been in cults, but you're also going to counsel people who are going through difficult life issues. Yes, I, I have specialised in uh, trauma, abuse and cult-related issues. Is that what you're doing now? Yeah. yeah. That's well, wonderful. I don't have a job as yet. Would I'm, you like I'm, a job? I'm looking for work. I'm looking for work. Um, well, we should tell our viewers. A yes. lot of people watch. So Simon... Hogan Dawn is looking for work. In, in what capacity, please, Simon? Well, I can counsel people who are in uh, traumatic situations, family situations, um, couples counselling, uh, but particularly people who have been involved in cults. Uh, in fact, if you, if you search for someone in Australia who, couple, who does cult counselling... I don't think we'd find anyone. There's maybe one or two that I've been able to find that's actually available, but uh, most and, of them are and expensive. That's, and, and that's very good to know, folks, isn't it? Because a lot of people get stuck uh, because of insecurity and low self-esteem. A lot of people need groups, don't they? Because they can't operate on their own. As soon as they're by themselves, they, um, they go a bit stir-crazy, don't they? So they need groups, whether they join a motorcycle gang or a cult or a group, you know? It's like the long weekends, that's when most crime happens and most people suicide because um, during the week, you know, they're surrounded by the opinions of others and then, and then you know, people spend a bit of time by themselves and they, um, you know, not many people accept themselves these days because uh, society keeps on putting people down right from the days, you know, we go to school, you're not good enough, there's that, and then uh, same at uni and then we get into the work bullying by, you know, a lot of insecure people. So. Mm. It's a very broken world full of broken people, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah, know? It is. If we all showed a bit more kindness to each other, you know, took mm. out a bit of philosophy of religion and made up a bit of Buddhism and, you know, treated everybody like brothers and sisters, there wouldn't be that many wars, you know? Yeah, wouldn't be that true. many prisoners in prison, would there? Mm. You know? But that, that takes a big mind shift away from... It does. ..away from being looking inward to mm. looking outward. Yeah. How are you, Simon? Honestly, how are you in your mind? Are you happy? Um, I've actually um, had a diagnosis of dysthymia. What's that? Um, that's similar to depression, mm -hmm. but it is a depression that's been going on for so long mm -hmm. that it has hardwired itself into the brain. Okay. So uh, someone with dysthymia is incapable of seeing life as being great and joyful and a good thing. You're content. Um, I'm content. Um, I have plans for the future. Mm -hmm. I have good days. I have fun times. But overall, I, I can't see a fun and joyful life. However, I'm getting counselling on that at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I have been told that with my medication being increased, I'm going to experience an outlook on life that I've never known before. So, I mean, I so, think you will find joys because, folks, life is really a, a, a journey full of 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows, isn't it? You know, some days we wake up, everything falls into place, much like, um, you know... Have a great days, and other times, you know, your your partner might not talk to you, and you might get into a bit of a, a disagreement with someone else. But um, uh, I suppose we just have to accept the as isness of life. And um, I think Simon, once you meet a, a a person you really bond with, doesn't matter whether it's a male or female, you know. But I think a good friend, you, you know, sometimes you meet people and they're on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. and and you just love them like a brother or sister. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you know people for. You know, for years, you just don't get on, you know, like a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law, you know. But sometimes you just meet people and you want to give them a big hug, you know. I, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what happens. But we might speak about your journey over the next five years and um, all the exciting things you've done since you've left the cult. Tough times never last. Don't go away. We'll be back shortly. And thank you very much for watching. Love and best wishes. Thank you for your emails on Facebook. Sorry I don't get back sometimes. I uh, hate that word busy, but sometimes uh, my life gets very productive. Um, uh, in the break, Simon, 
and I would talk about God, you know, and there's uh, really a day that I don't speak to God. And uh, we've all got a different relationship to God of the universe, haven't we? But I know through the difficult times I've gone through, like um, in the police force, you know, the deaths, the cot deaths and um, my bouts of, um, I suppose you could say, situational depression when I attended fatal accidents. Um, uh, when I did pray and showed gratitude, um, good things um, happened, you know, and also, um, you know, when I went through relationship problems. So, um, and, and it's a funny thing, isn't it, whether it's the universe or God, but when we do think about something and show gratitude, all of a sudden, um, you know, the universe provides you that the right person rings or, you know, we're just in the right place at the right time. So I still can't put my finger on it. But, um, but you're saying, Simon, that um, we don't need to be perfect. We're all perfectly imperfect. Yeah. So God um, loves us anyway. Yeah. When I was in the cults, we were always told that you have to keep striving to be good enough for God. Yeah. They say, you know, all those churches out there, they'll talk to you about a loving God, but that's all rubbish, nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, God will punish you for being bad. He'll punish you if you leave. Um, you go through all this stuff. If you leave, you might become addicted to drugs or whatever and all those different things. But I've come to realize realize that um, uh, no matter what we do, we're never going to be good enough for God. Um, that's a key point to realize because um, God loves us not because of the things we do. Mm -hmm. God loves us despite the things we do. That's nice to know. So viewers, you're being loved. Remember that you're loved and cared for. Simon, have mm -hmm. you got a girlfriend? I've got a wife. Wow. Yes, who is now my best us. friend I've ever had. Well, say had. hello to her. Don't be bashful. Hello, Sade. Love you very much. And my daughter, Crystal. Oh, I didn't Wonderful. know that. Yes. Family comes first. Yes. In fact, um, God has healed a rift between my ex-wife and myself as well. Amazing. Um, and uh, she's back in our lives as well. And, and your lovely daughter, how old is she? She's... Um, about to turn 18 this year. Wow, and that's with your first wife? With my first wife, So yes. everybody's happy? We're all going to the same church. That's beautiful. So you found a new church? We found a new church. Um, I've discovered that God uh, does love me um, regardless of what I've done. He's forgiven those things I'm going to do tomorrow, next year. They're all forgiven. Uh, I still have consequences. Sure. You, know, you go through tough times, you've got consequences mm -hmm. of the decisions you make. But God has forgiven you already. We just thank him for the forgiveness and ask him to make us better people. Simon, you've been praying to God a lot more intensely and more than I have. Um, have you ever had any um, quality communication with him um, or, or I, had miracles happen? I don't know if I can say I've prayed to God more intensely than you have. Um, I, I, I used to think you had to do certain things to be praying to God. But now I realise just talking to God is praying to God. Mm. Um, you, know, you can have a conversation with God in the car. You can have a conversation with God as you're laying in bed. Wow. Um, you can just say, look, thanks for everything you've done mm. for me today. And can you help me with what's happening tomorrow? Mm. Um, sometimes I forget to do that. Mm. Um, but God still loves me. How long have you been married for this time around? Um, we've just had our seventh anniversary Terrific. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Lovely. Yeah. And uh, we're still madly in love, and I didn't think that was possible. You know? what, what do you do in your fun time with your lovely wife? What do we do in our fun time? We like to play games. Mm -hmm. What um, sort of games? Uh, our favourite is Carcassonne. Um, for those gamers out there, you probably know what Carcassonne is. Otherwise, you can just Google it. It's a fun little game with tiles on a, on a table. Mm. Simon, you said before you don't know how to have fun anymore. You're lying. See, I can see you smiling I, when I you're playing games. I have my fun games. times. You smiled when you spoke about your wife. You yes. smoked when you spoke about your daughter. Maybe yes. sometimes folks, we just forget. We think there's all this stuff going on. Maybe, um, you know, depression's in the stories, you know. So Simon forgot that he's very happy. He's got a beautiful wife, got a beautiful daughter. So maybe sometimes we should just concentrate on all the positive things in our lives and forget about the difficult ones, you know. Just put them in a too hard basket and address those, you know. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. What's your advice to people who are really down um, and they might have come out of a cult or are stuck in a cult and they're suicidal. So okay. The first thing is you have to talk to someone. No matter who it is, talk to someone. Let them know how you're feeling. And they're not going to shun you or think you're bad or anything like that. They're going to want to help. So, yeah, just talk to someone. That's the first step. And with today's technology... You've got groups on Facebook, you've got groups out there that have done the same hard yards as you. And 
they're more than willing to help you through and support what, you, what you're going through, yeah. That's amazing. And Simon, um, uh, you never got onto the drugs? Yeah, yeah, I got onto the drugs, um, only, only the marijuana, mm -hmm. but I was on that for a, a long time in a hard way. Mm -hmm. um, and that was mostly because I, I had to forget the, the, to the loneliness and the, sure. the trauma. Um, and thanks for sharing. Mm. And you, you never got um, uh, stopped by the uh, constabulary? Before, Not f um, well, I, I did actually have a police dog hanging off my shoulder at one stage. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, I got took in and uh, charged. Um, and uh, well, that, that was your run-in with the law? That's my run-in with the law. Um, but and you've probably got a great criminal lawyer like Rob Melisek over there who got a, a, a no conviction outcome or something, didn't you? I did get a no conviction outcome um, uh, because I, I told them about the, this strange church I had been involved oh. in and all this. And they, I had an understanding magistrate who, who knew that I, I was going through a tough time. Indeed. Um, and I, I did see some counselling and uh, got through that, yeah. Well, it certainly sounds to you like the full package, and uh, I think anybody who, who does go through difficult times, I think you'll um, give them some great advice. Yes, yes. What are the, what are the plans for, um, for this year? The rest of this year, um, the plans are to try and find work. I, mm. I really want to help people, mm. um, but uh, I, I, I need to find some place that's willing to employ me. All right. And, uh, yeah. If there's any potential employers out there, please um, email us at uh, Channel 31 or Tough Times Never Last because, um, you know, genuine people who do want to help people, I think, should be given a chance. And, um, um, you know, why not have a chat to uh, Simon? And um, I'm sure he will, um, you know, assist your organisation in, in, in a great capacity. Mm. Um, any holidays lined up, Simon? Um, <laughs> We are not rich enough for holidays, that's in, mm. in a nutshell. Um, holidays are for the future, once, once uh, we've, we've got, had some work come in, yeah. Simon, so, mean, it's been a great pleasure speaking to you about. I, I know there's so many more things about the cult I'd like to hear, but maybe we'll have you on again, but uh, God bless yeah. you, my friend. Thank you very much. You know, thanks for being so authentic and so kind. It's been my pleasure. And for, um, you know, giving us some, an insight into your life. It's a beautiful life, you know. And viewers, thank you very much for the pleasure of your company. Um, love and best wishes. We'll see you next week and um, good night.